Hi, my name is Sandy Baird, and I'm here with what's happening. And our people here tonight, Mark Estrin and Kurt Maida. And the reason I kind of stumbled on that is that none of us have any titles. And we were asked what our titles were, but we are mere common people. We don't have any titles at all. Defenders it's of the faith. Defenders of what faith? <laughs> right, right. It sounds hey, like faith. the Jesuits. Right. Um, and so we're here to discuss current matters that are floating around in the world. And we're going to begin with a local matter and talk a little bit about the importance or non-importance of the struggle over Burlington Telecom. Um, and so what's happening, Mark? Well, we're in a, uh, a, not, we're in a, a lull, a public lull, mm -hmm. but there are intense negotiations going on. And this week, the uh, uh, f the original four bidders, who have been reinvited back into the bidding process, uh, because after two votes between uh, Ting and Ting Two Cows, T yes, Ting Two Cows, and uh, the Keep Vermont uh, Keep VT Local, it was a six to six vote in uh, two votes, so they decided to invite the previous two that had been excluded into a four-person, uh, four-company offer. And uh, this week, uh, <coughs> the companies are submitting the current proposals to the mayor and to the uh, c c council, and uh, it's all hush hush at right, this point. Right. But <clears throat> one of the stipulations is that before the council votes on the 27th, I think it is, uh, that uh, the proposals will be made public. Uh, so this week? This week or mm -hmm. next week. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that the public has a chance to look at them and then uh, participate in the voting meeting on the 27th. Mm -hmm. But I think this lull is, is a good thing, right? Based yeah, on, yeah, I based think on so. the conversation yes. we had on the last show where yes, we, I think we it were is. afraid that they were just going to make a rash, you know, quick economic decision, uh, you know, Correct. having this additional time. Well, it, do, it, do you think it's going to be beneficial or is it just going to be uh, a predetermined uh, decision in the end anyway? I don't know. It seems to me that um, I'm, I'm a, f a fan of Keep BT Local, uh, that the, the more, the, that was already one of two contestants. Mm -hmm. Now right. it's one of four contestants. So uh, if it were completely random, uh, the probability of BT local. <laughs> I don't think it's very probable that BT local will be kept. Will be yeah, so I think I think the lull is not necessarily as as good as uh, having had a, a, a real decision previously. But um, really? from my point yeah. of view, right. From, yeah. I have a slightly different point of view than Mark. I was a fan too of the cooperative, and and I really hope for that one to succeed. However, I have a feeling, and I have talked to some of the city councilors actually, that that was never a real possibility. Although they were firm supporters of the co-op, that they were voting for the co-op, for the co-op, but also as a way to prevent it going to Ting. Because in many of their views, Ting is a really not a great company, very little experience with apparently telecommunications. Um, and was totally going to privatize the whole system. And it was the mayor's first choice. And it was odd the way the whole thing happened. He, he pressed for Ting throughout this whole proceedings. And there were better, according to the city councilors that I talked to, there were better companies that were offering more money and more local control even, like, like Shures. I don't know what that is, but is that? OK, anyway. Uh, sometimes this show is a live show, so... Uh, yeah, well, the yeah. phone is... I ordered, pe down I, I ordered pizza a little while yeah, ago, right, so maybe... Right. Yeah, right. So, um, I believe that uh, that while the counselors were pro-co-op, they were trying to get the co-op, and the co-op was trying, to get a more viable proposal. And so this stall is, I think, good for the co-op and good for everybody, because if Ting had won, it would have been a disaster. But it's not a stall. 
it's a be. period of new negotiation. My, my, From yeah. our point of view, it's blank. But it's probably the most intense uh, yeah. now because people know what the issues are and who's for what and where. Right. And so, so that the current proposals are going to really be in struggle. Right. But well, what about it's, if it's a joint venture again with a better company? Well, how do you put together, you know, a co -op know. model with a capitalist model? You know. No, I agree with that. I mean, it is Especially like capitalism and socialism. It is. Right. You know, I agree with that. But anyway, so. You're saying from the get-go this, this wasn't going to... Look, from the get-go, what I've been told, again, I'm not an expert on this, although I've been to all the meetings, and I, yeah. I watched it all unfold. But from the get-go, it was felt that the mayor was totally biased for Ting, and that he really... In fact, he urged another one of those companies to withdraw. In spite of the fact that some of these companies were, were offering better. more money? More money. So yeah. that's really surprising, given right. you know the attitude of... Uh, just making, you know, an economically based decision. Right, no, he, he was, I don't know why that happened, because this company, Shures, and there's one vote for Shures, and that was Kurt Wright. And Kurt's a Republican, uh, but I often think that he is speaking for the best interest of, of the city. Of the city. I mean, I've watched him over the years, and, I, you know, I know everybody says, oh, you know, he's a Republican, blah, blah, blah. Which is true. It is true right. that he's you can't, you can't end the description no, of the conversation uh, right. by just calling no, someone. I don't. Something. And he and I yeah. basically are old friends, and we fought for the waterfront together. Kurt and I did um, many, many years ago. He was for a public waterfront as well. But anyway, so he favored Shores. And so I asked him, how come? And there were two reasons that um, I learned from him and uh, the other counselor who was a strong proponent of uh, the co op, and that's Dave Hartnett. In fact, I think he was a real kind of a hero. He stuck by the co-op till the you know till the end, and I think he might still. But he told me that there were two advantages: one, that Shures was uh, offering more money, but secondly, Shures is offering more local control, a, a real ownership interest which to would be, be kept by the city, which is to me, which is what I'm interested right, in. Right, right. Um, you know, the the more money stuff only makes sense if you say more money when mm -hmm. and what's the cap right. on the money. And uh, the Keep that. a Keep BD Local has pu published last week even, mm -hmm. uh, you know, 10 year projections right. at which the most money comes into back to Burlington. Oh, I favor to, them actually. So, yeah. so when you say more money, you're just t talking about more money initially. No, but I'm not. I'm not talking no, no, when, from when me. People, when right, people right. say, "Oh, yeah, this right. is you know twelve thousand, twelve million dollars versus thirty million dollars," that's the initial separation. But those lines come together. As the if so, so, together, so we're talking right? more about a down payment essentially, yeah. rather than yeah, you know, so. yeah. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. but for instance, the ting is is cut at the, the amount of money that comes back to Burlington Nothing, is six yeah. is six million dollars, uh, period. Mm -hmm. You know, and after that, that's it. Whereas the amount of money that comes back to taxpayers, I don't know. We're being harassed. <laughs> uh, right, at, least, right. at least it's not a robo call. call. Yeah, it's maybe a it is. Call. Um, uh. Yeah. Well, I'm not saying what I think. I would like the co-op to be chosen, regardless of the money, regardless. Even if it's not as seemingly viable, I still want the co-op. I'm just saying what, they're, what I've heard their thinking is. And their thinking is, is that it's not a viable proposal and that if they could get more money up front, maybe. But, but it I, sounds like you're, you're saying that it was never a viable proposal. Proposal. I, it was never even under really under no, consideration. No, no, it was under consideration. Of course, it was, and they and they and the city council stuck. Those six stuck firmly with the co-op, and maybe they still will. It's just that I think that the risk was that King was going to win. Okay. You know, Is there a possibility uh, of a deadlock? I don't know. It can't be. This is the other thing, which I was told by a, a, a fan of the co-op. Why the hell are they send, selling it at all right now? I mean, this when Jonathan Leopold did whatever he did to Burlington Telecom, and I'll say what I think he did. Um, he invested in the co in in Burlington Telecom, and it's hugely prosperous now. It has a growth rate. They've increased their subscribers double. Oh. And they've, they're really in the black. They're really doing pretty well, and they have plans to extend. So <coughs> why does it have to be sold? 
The mayor is saying it has to the, be sold. The mayor is saying no, that. No, it was in the agreement. No, but agreements are made to be renegotiated. Correct? Uh, to go over my pay grade. I don't know. <laughs> no, you do know. That's, that's what the know. president says. Well, right, so, right. and so do we as lawyers, <laughs> right? Right. All things are meant to be. I'm not a lawyer. Be, to be renegotiated. So I don't understand the, why it has to be sold. Okay. Will you accept that from the commoner's point of I view? Know. Uh, it's in a contract whereby it has to be sold and the amount that Burlington can get back differs after January 1st coming right. up, etc. Right. Et so but if it's so the, max, the optimal time to sell as per the contract is uh, before the, the end of the year. So a, a You're buyer has to be You're talking about the rules chosen. of capitalism. I'm talking about... You're talking about a contract. Correct? What do I know? Yeah, I'm talking about right. some kind of contract so that they keep the, the, holding up in front of their faces. You right. Know? And that's the answer to your question. Now, take the question behind the piece of paper. Uh, yeah, which then, I would do. Okay, so then I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know how you do that. Well, the reason that I think um, it's, real, it's the most important issue facing the city, because I've told this story before a million times. When... Um, when I got involved with Burlington Telecom, I've talked to you about Al Jazeera all the time, right? Right, right. And so I learned at that time through a mutual friend of ours, Jared, who we, he and I worked on that legally, that if it has a municipal ownership piece, then it's kind of, it has to meet constitutional requirements, right? If Certainly. And, and so we were able to protect Al Jazeera English because we argued that um, the... It could not be censored because it was locally owned, and therefore it had to meet requirements of free speech. If it's Comcast or Ting or any of these other companies, they don't have to do. They don't even, I don't think, have to do public access. I don't right? believe they do. So that's what's Legally important to speaking. me, and that feature has not come out at all. Not at all, has it? I think the the guy who was here from Ting um, had verbally pledge to continue public access and extend it. And, he and, uh, verbally Yes, did. verbally pledged. By the way, did you notice his Burlington costume? Did you see that? Yeah. He deliberately dressed down to come right. to Burlington. Right. It was really... No Armani suit? No, yeah. no T-shirt, <laughs> right? right? No sweater, yeah. With Alan Mattis. With same deal. Same. With Alan, yeah. Right, yeah. same deal with Alan Mattis, yeah. But anyway, that's why I think it's important. I think it provides... Burlington Telecom has provided alternate media, and I'm not certain that Ting would. Certainly Comcast. And then they're, uh, they're not bound to. No, they don't. Any, no, it's a means. private company. Right. It's a right. private company. Private yeah. corporations don't but, have to you know, that do free is, speech. Uh, I would guess that those um, points that have been verbally made are the new level at which the four competitors this week and next week are going to be compared. I hope so. Well, yeah. But I so it's so. those kind of details. Well, I heard you say it. You said it four times. I'm not sure certain Ting is still in the offing, is it? Oh, yeah. yeah, it is. But anyway, I didn't hear any, in any meeting that I went to, any guarantees of free speech. None. But, is it, but is, it a situa is it essentially a negotiation ploy later where, where if that's who they go for? They'll say, well, w what they're giving back is they're going to have, you know, a public access Yeah, they could say option. it and then sell it to Comcast. Of course. Well, so, of course. But I'm just saying as a way to sell it and make it, you know, viable to the public that we're going to provide this, you know, hour of public access. Do you think the access. public really cares about Al Jazeera English? Yeah. Not Some of us Not a do. large portion Some of, of it, but I think a portion did. does. I do, too, but yeah. I do not think that will be. No, I, I don't have it, a... It, that hasn't been... In the headlines. No, but not right. at all. I mean, I tried to, and I felt like I was a maniac. Is, is uh, uh, Trump requiring that RT register as a foreign agent? I saw that. And I now saw that. Putin uh, saying, well, uh, we he have has his own list with Voice of America. What, did, right. what does it mean to register a foreign agent? Does that mean they can't be on television? No. And why isn't countries like Israel register as a foreign agent? Well, good question. Yeah. Right? Uh, why is it only Russia? Yeah. Well, because. Because. The scrutiny because, is on Russia. Because that's, no. yeah, right. That's, I loved RT. That used to be on Burlington Telecom, too. Well, I see. I watch it every day. But but you watch it on a computer, which yeah. I, yeah, I can't stand that. But anyway, <laughs> I like RT. So uh, the idea of what's a legitimate public offering 
is out, is out there now because Trump is bringing it up. You know, well, what is this he, is not what? legitimate because they're a foreign agent. Why do we have to use public airwaves to support a foreign is that agent? His is that his position? I imagine he doesn't have a position. But if you read, if he says, well, I don't, and I don't want this to happen. But if he says that RT has to register, what really does that mean? What does it mean? I don't know. It's probably. I, I think there's a greater level of scrutiny regarding finances. Finances only, or content? No, no, no. It's finances. Uh -huh. It's finances, which will lead to you know, it's, it's a it's a method of controlling content. Uh huh. Uh huh. And so they have to register. Who else did you say? RT and somebody else. No, Putin says we we have to respond in kind. Uh huh. And I don't think that's a finished proclamation. Mm -hmm. It's being voted on mm -hmm. in uh, Russian in Russia, but. Uh, Right, the, uh, I think the par and that and that in itself is going to bring up the issue of public television, what's available, and then, uh -huh. to, to at least greater visibility. Right. So, what do you think will would happen about that? I mean, why was why is RT even on the air here? It used to be in Burlington, but I'm not. RT is Russian television, by the way, for our audience, right? But um, it's not on anymore. But it's it, it's uh, not a government-controlled station any more than Al Jazeera is. Right, yeah. right, so right. So it's a it's a freewheeling network. I know, I know. Anyway, so that's my worry: is that free speech will be cut down if a company like Tang takes it over. That's really what I'm most worried about. I mean, it could happen even with Berlin, the co-op, because the co-op is not the city. The co-op is a corp uh, is a economic. Uh, institution, right? It's right. A private so, I mean, well, institution, so, so I'm not certain. If you, if you, right. If you put it on the, if, on the flip side, I mean, if there was uh, a right wing station, mm -hmm. uh, you know, or programming that wanted to come in, would the co-op bar them? I don't know, but I'll tell you an interesting story about that too. Because as a result of the Al Jazeera struggle, I was appointed to the because I got interested in the subject. I was appointed to the cable advisory committee, and I served on that committee with three other people. Um, and um, they were, they thought of Al Jazeera English as, very, as too uh, pro-Arab. Um, they thought of it as a terrorist network and uh, anti-Israel and anti-U.S. I mean, that's and, the way it was portrayed, I remember, during right, the Iraq right, right. War. So I was sitting on uh, this committee with these three other people who wanted it off the air, essentially. And um, I didn't say a word. I never said anything. And one of them brought up, well, I want Glenn Beck on the air. And I said, sure, fine, why not? You know, right. Get him, fine. And then that guy sort of said, he sort of really questioned, who the hell is this person, right? That she would say something like having Glenn Beck on the air. And I did. He actually called Glenn Beck and said, I have this crazy friend, Sandy Barrett, who's, who's pro <laughs> having you here. So I interview her on Glenn Beck's show, and I was interviewed um, for that show. But, but when I... When I said that, I really meant it, that we have to guarantee free speech. For right, both, I mean, free speech. For, and I don't know yeah, about the co-op. I don't full, know. Right, I mean, that includes the entire the, spectrum. Right, yeah. right. What do you think? I mean, you know, you think that they would follow that? Of course. Uh-huh. But they wouldn't have to. I mean, the, they wouldn't the, have to. The, the prediction of, of course, comes exactly from those Al Jazeera meetings. You were at the, you know, the, the city meetings, citywide yeah. meetings, and it was vastly, hugely, uh, hugely supported, supportive supported. of having, uh, you know, Al Jazeera. And why? Not because they were voting, you know, for uh, against Israel, right. or, but because they were voting for free speech. Free speech, speech and right? That, and that's, I think, predictive of the way Burlington will, the Burlington uh, keep local will vote on anything. It's free speech. I would hope so. I would hope so. I mean, there is... I'm I not mean, as confident as you guys. No, no, I, I didn't I say that. I didn't yeah, say I, I was it, confident. Yeah, I think if it was a, a right-wing message have to watch. Being, I think we'd have to watch. Yeah. Yeah, really careful. And I, I, I'm confident uh, because in a certain, to a certain degree, the culture in Burlington is reactive to the general push now towards censorship, towards, uh, uh, you know, the kinds of things that Trump is pushing and the, the Department of Justice is pushing mm -hmm. and, the, and the kind of Mac McCarthy kind of hysteria thing. That's so in, in Burlington's face 
uh, that I think that free speech will remain the primary. I hope so. But think of what basically the Democrats are doing about Russia, you know? Yes, right. You know, well, that is shocking to me that they would censor right, anybody associated with Russia, right? But hasn't that always been the case? No, no. Not always. no I mean, there was a brief it's period no. of time, I guess, maybe with the fall of the Soviet Union when that fell apart. No. That, you know, it was. Well, because the premise at that time was that they were going to become, you know, uh, they did a, for a, a while. A Russian, you know, copycat of the United States. Well, Yeltsin seemed to want that. Right, right, right. he did, right. Yeah. But once, once we, they deviated from that model, you know, then it seemed like things went back to the way they were during the Cold War with yes. respect to, yes. with you know, any kind to, of right. different message being right. uh, put out. Right, right. Especially with Putin, and I don't. Right, especially. With I don't totally get it. I don't really. Well, it's, it's a capitalist a, it's country, a theme. isn't it? It's a well, he was ex-KGB. So what? And I, I think you know, they're, the 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 military elite here, they're going to hold that against them. Well, and, mm -hmm. and the CIA spies right. and the NSA spies Absolutely. are complaining about him being KGB. Right, you know? right. And we should trust them yeah. because, you know. The but these are old associations. Yeah. And, and I don't think sort of so. I don't think so. Uh, yes, to a certain extent. But I also think, for once, I agree with you about economics. I mean, it seems to me that Putin is trying to make an alternate economic union with China that would be very threatening to capitalism it seems to me Putin China if that became a whole economic union well, that's not an opinion that's the that's case. really too uh, yeah, uh, there was a so. there was a prominent so. I think a, a person Republican I forget or someone in the military uh, no it was uh, it was Kelly uh, Michael yeah right okay. right I think he made a, uh, a statement that was really controversial in the last few weeks you know aside from the war widow and all that stuff that was going on he said that communism worked in China. It does? Well, but, but it's not communism. It, <laughs> right. Well, a hybrid, but, you know, but still, I mean, with the Marxist, you know, literature and the, and the flags and all that stuff, you know, that they still do have in China, uh, that was a very controversial statement for someone, you know, that high up in any administration in the United States to say something like that. And he got a lot of, you know, crap for it. Huh. Is it, though, truly a communist? Well, well, I don't know. I mean, it's not. First of all, um, it's remarkably successful, China is, right? Right. Um, and that's what I think that the U.S. fears, is this kind of union of the Russians and the Chinese to well, form course. this alternate sort of economic force. Sure, I mean, you'd have two billion people yeah. you know, between the two countries. Right. Right. And uh, if you Right. And, well, well, and it's also what would be the international trading standard, yes. right. uh, monetary standard. And what would be Absolutely. the what would be the currency? The, the, yeah. What That's would it be? Yeah. It wouldn't be the dollar. No. Well, they're going with a kind of mixed pot of currency to become like what, the standard. Like what? The yen. Yuan. And, and, yuan and, and, and uh, not the ruble. Though. I don't. I don't know. I don't know what. But I know yuan is big in there. I don't know what the mm -hmm. other. Ren mm -hmm. Yeah. But why then, if that's the case, if that's what the U.S. fears, this union of uh, Russia and China, why then is Trump so pro-Russia? Is he trying to just split that and make a nice deal with Russia alone and sort of, you know, divert them from the, uh, any kind of a connection with China? Is he trying to split them up? Why is he so... Well, I mean, the last I mean, he, several administrations going back to Nixon were held up. Oh, well before Nixon, we were hell-bent on trying to, you know, create that fissure between Russia mm -hmm. and China. But they, uh, they appealed to China primarily, right? Of course. Right. That, it was always the, yeah, they, they leaned towards yeah. China to, right. you know, try to break up right. that uh, possible communist mm -hmm. union. Right. There's a kind of immunological level at which, um, the, since, you know, 1905 probably, right. but in any case 1917, at which anything for Americans, anything Russian, is is a threat, and and so develop a, an antibody system, mm -hmm. and the antibody system can get triggered by anything at the will at the switch of the button, mm -hmm. and then you go into anaphylaxis, mm -hmm. and, uh, and the whole body shuts down. <laughs> you can't breathe. You need, you know you need uh, emergency injections. And, and it's an anaphylactic response that we're having that we can, anybody like Hillary or the Democratic National Committee or what, who wants to manipulate American consciousness, they just have to push 
the Russian, Russian button. button. Right. And that's what's happening, and that will distract from anything immediately, anything else like, you know, what's going on. Well, I mean, they want people, they want to trigger, you know, people's deepest, darkest fears during the course of the what Cold the War. During the Cold War, though, that really? they're going to, that they're, you know, the, well, whatever the fear was in the in the fifties and sixties. Take away your toothbrush. Yeah, you don't have to use someone else's toothbrush oh from a gosh. common. And you're gonna have to pay more taxes. I guess so. so. Your money's gonna go yeah. towards. And you'll be to treated by women doctors. Right. Low paid. But everybody goes to women doctors here, right? <laughs> um, the, the the one thing that is always missing in all this uh, anti-Russia hysteria is the two facts that to me are the most important, that we allied with them twice, that we were allies in a common effort essentially to stop Germany. What, why is there zero mention of that? If that's not utter propaganda, the stuff that they say about Russia, without mentioning those two facts, it's just, it's just total propaganda, it yeah, seems except to me. That it's not a fact. I mean, we it were both. It is a fact. We were allies. Of course we were, but we weren't. Right. No, well, we were for convenience, okay? Yes, right. and right. for... Uh, and this, right, the, the yeah. second time around, it was uh, initially they were allied with the, with the Germans. It was just when the Germans double-crossed them that they became No, the Russians, allies. right, correct, but, right. well, okay, yes. I mean, they had a, they yes, had a pact, yes. you know, to divide up Poland and the I Baltic mean, the states. Plan, right. the plan for the Cold War was put into effect before the end of the Second World War. Right? Yeah, correct. sure. Right. So that's, that you shows that? you, you that, that that shows you that the, you know our ally for us for them um, the, you know up there uh, was not our ally. We had to maneuver so well, that the post-war settlements, whatever they were in terms of land and economy, had to take care of the Russians not as an ally but as an enemy. Right. What are you What are you referring to? The well, for just for well. The, for instance, the dropping of the bombs, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, was to keep show Russia what we can do. What we can do. More so than even showing the Emperor of Japan what we yeah, can do. Because, right, right, because we didn't need to do that at that point. Mm -hmm. But, but... Um, is that documented? Because I've heard that yes. before. It is documented? Yeah, the biggest book on it is Al Alperovitz's book. What? Alperovitz, uh, Gar Alperovitz. Uh -huh. And he has a, a, an excellent, tha big book on the, the decision to drop the bomb. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but anyway, um, it's not just that. And you know, you read in uh, Truman's uh, diaries. You can. Yeah. Read, so, it's to call Russia our ally, and then to uh, build build some kind of thought structure on that when it's not really true. You know, it's true on the surface. But it should be mentioned. Don't you think? <laughs> yeah. Shouldn't it be mentioned that they basically won the war? Won the war in Europe, at least. Shouldn't it even be mentioned well, that they drove yeah. back the Nazis? No. No, because you know people want. That's not the narrative. Right. That's not the narrative. People right. want to create their own. And also, no one, you know that all the heroes are here. Mm -hmm. And no one wants to uh, mention. It's never that fun to share credit. Right. Exactly. 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 So, turning to another matter, what about all this sexual harassment? And you said you'd bring it up because you're a man, and that right. Would be well, good. we were just talking yeah, about right. Russia. I know. So. <laughs> I know. So you bring it up. Right. So, uh, so I'm going to just put the, the the question out there: Does, Is this going to result in any kind of change no. in the long term, or is this a a a thing like everyone on Facebook two years ago were putting the French flag after the uh, the terrorist attack at uh, Charlie Hebdo? Yeah. And now everyone's going back to their well, old it can't Facebook. Be, it can't be that right because the people with uh, Je suis Charlie, uh, all of that, really didn't know beans about what. Of course was. not. All but right. the people who are the women who are c consistently and have consistently been uh, harassed uh, in this culture, in the patriarchal culture, they uh, they are there. They are Charlie. You know, but what, uh, and that's but a very there, big difference. But is there going to be any kind of syst systemic change in the next five years? Five years from now, what's yeah. what's going to be different? I mean, to me, what it seemed to yeah. represent was that nothing's changed. Right. Right. You know, I mean, I, we kind of. I thought we went through a round of this during the Anita, Anita Hill uh, right, hearings that's when true. Yeah, uh, that's Justice true. Thomas was put on the right. Supreme Court. And the issue of se sexual harassment was brought to the, you know, to the mainstream. Mm -hmm. But only with regard to Anita Hill. I guess so. 
I mean, there was a lot, there were a lot of women that came out and said that, you know, we identify with her, we've had these experiences, and... Uh, there weren't? There, there, were. There, were. There, there were. There were, yeah. There were. Right, right. but it was all directed at the level of a Supreme Court nomination. and I mean, it was sort of rare, more rarefied, and it wasn't the way There wasn't it a broader nominated. reflection in society. Not across, well, across uh, you know, it's, and it's not just politicians now, it's men in power, period, and the mm -hmm. distribution of power, and everywhere you look, in in the power in power structures you find it so it's a it's a vast uh, ch charge that's happening now the question is how does it sustain without getting boring to uh, to, to me it feels a little bit yeah right and it's also yeah. become politicized I mean you know mean? when when the what folks uh, there were a number of, of leading you know people at Fox News that were charged right. you know the Democrats jumped on them and said yeah. well okay this is a Republican issue I know and now that you know a number of people in Hollywood prominent people in Hollywood have uh, been accused Our, Weinstein's Weinstein, a Democrat, but now right? you know you have Dustin Hoffman you know Al Franken Al Franken yep when that was that today mm, yesterday okay I didn't hear that one but now then you know you have people on the right saying this is a Democratic issue what no one wants to admit this is a male issue no kidding, yeah. But, you know, it's easy to, you know, point fingers on that. So I don't know that anything is going to really change. What do you change. think it's, it's all about? I mean, some, I think there is, as Katha Paulette pointed out in The Nation in this current issue, there is somewhat uh, a risk, I think, um, in if a, if a woman comes forth after 30 years, I think there is a little bit, I mean, it's great to hear from a woman, I would believe her, but what is the evidence at that point? And it could lead to uh, a trivializing of the whole issue also, you know, there sure, is... Sure, could, and there could be a backlash, like Yeah, that's what I'm is. afraid of, that's yeah. what I'm afraid of. I mean, in fact, when Trump was outed about all this stuff, no one cared at all. Right. What does the backlash look like, though? That's other than that what we have. That women can't be believed. That they can't, right, from a that credibility standpoint. Believed. That, you know. As always, right? I mean, right I now, the backlash. I don't see that as, as any different from what we have. No, now. it's not. It's not. No, no it's no, not. But, it wouldn't but be. It could it be. Wouldn't be. I mean, it, it, I mean, right now, the focus it doesn't, on. I'm not certain it helps. Yeah, the words. focus on this uh, former chief justice in Alabama. Uh, oh, right yeah. More. yeah. That's uh, different, though, isn't it? Why? Because he is accused of assaulting people and raping them, isn't he? I don't think he was accused of rape. I, no, I know the that problem he was, was with Moore is underage. Uh, underage. Yeah, well, yeah. that's rape. Right. Well, again. Statutory rape, yeah. Right. I mean, uh, but 30, 40 years after that's the fact. Right, that's right. And in terms I mean. of the evidence, they say, you know, the only thing that they can find is that he was banned from a, a shopping mall. Mm hmm you know, for, for the fact that, you know, when he was district attorney in his, in his 30s, that he would hang out and try to pick up girls. And the why. Allegedly. And what? The why. He the why? Kicked that's out male. of the why. I didn't know that. But that's yeah. a whole male. In, no, no. At that time, was it? I mean, it was the YW and the YM. Some of the YMCA? Yeah. Well, maybe I'm, um, it, Okay, but what does it what does it really say about the whole power structure in the United States? It, what it says to me is that the power structure is still male, right? Even after women's liberation, even after feminism, it remains mostly that men are in power, right? Absolutely. And that, There's no question right, about Right, and that. I'm not certain I'm just not certain what kind of effect that this is going to have. On that. I mean, I'm trying to think of proposed legislation that can come out, and I, I can't really quite think of there is anything legislation, beyond. Isn't right, there? I'm going to say beyond what's already in existence. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I guess the only thing it could possibly do is uh, create a situation where more women feel comfortable bringing it up as opposed to waiting 30 years mm -hmm. when it happens. Mm -hmm. right, right, but what I was talking about the media getting bored. It then becomes a non-issue. Yeah, I know. So right. of course they'll move on to Including, something else. Including uh, the uh, mass shootings, for God's sakes. Sure. Even. Right? But that's the way the media works. I mean, right. yeah. I guess so. But you don't have. Uh, <laughs> in, in, I mean, mass mass harassment. It's like if you can kill more than ten people, it'll get on the news. But when one woman at a time is harassed, mm -hmm. uh, then it doesn't get on the news. 
uh, no more than one person killed. I mean, we have all these murders, and we're not connecting them with mass killings. So. Right. Uh, so, you know, what happens when it becomes invisible again? We've right. had our... Uh, We've had our... Sure, I mean, uh, you know, the media runs in cycles. You know, three months from now, if there are a bunch of shark attacks in Florida, everyone's right. going to be talking about sharks. This will be, you know, mm -hmm. old news, and will anything have happened? Mm -hmm. Aside from to the individuals who are being accused. Oh, no. I think people, right I think men in power, unless they're at a level of moronic uh, behavior, w will be more cautious. Do you do think so? You think? Yes, I think that I, I don't know that the behavior will change, mm -hmm. but I think w uh, that that the the odds of getting caught or getting to have to defend yourself. Mm -hmm. But it seems like this up. moronic behavior is everywhere. I mean, uh, the, you yeah. know, there was a, a yeah. prominent well, congresswoman. But is it higher or lower? Right. And, and you it know, does, in the last two weeks. Yeah, I would have thought, you know, even before, you know, people would have been a little more cautious before, you know, whenever this the Weinstein stuff came out. But it doesn't appear, you know, people are very cautious. There was a, a congresswoman who just uh, gave a statement talking about that it's endemic in, in Washington, D.C., in the halls mm -hmm. of Congress. Mm -hmm. Uh, that, you know, pages are sent to, uh, to congressmen's homes and they get, you know, greeted by, you know, uh, like Broken. the congressman, and, you know, he's wearing a towel, you know, <laughs> right. that this is, this is a very common thing mm -hmm. that still exists. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wouldn't have thought it still existed, oh, but, right. but uh, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't seem that they were being cautious. Well, that's as of last week. Right. So uh, my, also, my, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, so anyway, my, my proposal is that they'll be more, the behavior won't change, but they'll be more cautious and line up their ducks, you know, slightly Maybe, differently. Maybe, I don't know. I think a lot of times, you know, men that feel that powerful, I guess, they don't think, the, they, don't don't think the don't. Rules, they don't think the rules apply to them. Right, I know. Yeah, but that was last week. <laughs> okay. No, but look at, I, I mean. No, no I'm, I'm serious. The, the, the. The volume of an attention, even if it's sporadic, is got, is got has got to make a difference. These are public people; they're being publicly shamed. They're being, you know, publicly dissected. They're losing their jobs. This, it seems to me, has to make a difference. Uh, in male behavior. In public male behavior. I mean, the people. But this this behavior wasn't public, exactly, was it? When they yeah, were no, but you're talking about public, public officials or no, no, public, no, no, or public people, personalities. Yeah, people outing them, people like. that are that are in, in in the public eye. In the public eye, or can easily become in the public eye, mm -hmm. you know, and and uh, that has to do with power level. So they're in the public eye. Uh, eye but so is it going to make a difference for someone working at the post office yeah, who's being well, harassed? I think so. I don't know. I I, I just think also, things change. Look, yeah. you can't anymore. Uh, Proclaim that you're going to uh, start using slaves, you know, uh, because that's your, you know, this is a free country. Mm -hmm. uh, so why? I mean, something changed in consciousness, uh, both on the part of perpetrators and on the part of the public, and it, it just behavior uh, becomes uh, intolerable that wasn't uh, intolerable before, and I, I can't, I can't imagine that this would have. No effect. That seems to me overly cynical. Could I, I guess it depends. I mean, yeah. if 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 some of these prominent people wind up going to jail or losing They're their positions, if they don't, yeah. and if they have, and, they and if some of them win, lost their continue positions. to win, they have win, lost win their positions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But they have not gone to jail, and I'm not. I'm not certain if it's a 30-year-old offense that people should go to jail about it. Speaking of that, one more minute. This guy, Josiah Leach, did you see in the paper this morning? Yeah. You know who he is? He's, the, yeah. he's the guy who uh, who did the email crisis over in South Burlington. He emailed death. Oh, oh, yes. I, and he I'm was, uh, Judge Crawford sentenced him to maybe five years probation, and he just violated his probation, allegedly violated the probation today. Okay. It just is terribly sad for me to think about that, like, a, a black boy going to jail. I hope he doesn't. Anyway, so I guess that's it for this month, and we'll see you next month, I hope.